We are going to talk about uh, perpetual help home today, and we have as our guest Lisa Morales. Uh, I'm going to try and get back to her bio here. And the first time I met Lisa or walked into her office, she had a North Texas um, logo shirt or something on, and uh, I knew I was home because I I got my bachelor's of business at North Texas, and uh, we we talked about all things mean green. Yes, it was my old track hat. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It was. And uh, so what I'm going to say next is that I'm going to read her statement over the last decade. Uh, Lisa's dedicated her personal and professional talents toward making a positive change in the lives of those wanting a better future from developing health and leadership skills in athletes to helping young people plan their futures with college preparedness and career skills. She's always taken an interest in helping others. Uh, she didn't always know exactly what career path she would take uh, or where she'd end up, but by the grace of God, her journey has landed her at Perpetual Help Home. As the executive director, this humbling opportunity uh, speaks of her passion, skill set, and guiding principle to create an environment supporting development and growth of character, health, and life skills. And so, Lisa, I am going to turn it over to you, and you have the screen share button down there at the bottom, and you go right ahead. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Lisa Morales. As Mr. Charlie said, I'm the executive director over at Perpetual Help Home. Um, I have been in this position now roughly a year, and let me tell you, no day is the same. Um, <laughs> you never really know what you're going to get when you're here, but you learn a lot. Um, you know, sometimes it's sometimes it's not always good. Sometimes we have those days where it's just like, really? And then other days you, you have amazing days. Um, and I think those amazing days really really outweigh those bad. Um, when you get, when we get our victories that we get, whether it's, you know, a mother getting her kids back for whatever reason, or, you know, one of the ladies paying off her, her, her probation and court cost, or, you know, maybe someone has freed themselves from financial debt. It's, it's always, I mean, it, it's so humbling seeing these ladies overcome their battles. And, and I, I'm truly grateful for being here and that I can be a part of that. Um, but this uh, this house pictured here is is kind of um, I say all, our fashion statement. Everybody knows us as as the big blue house. Um, we are located in Victoria, Texas, at 705 East Santa Rosa Street, um, and this is one of our buildings out of three where we house our residents. Um, so we are a women's transitional housing. Um, I like to call us a fancy. Uh, a fancy women's shelter because, you know, like a women's shelter, we provide, you know, a safe place for these women and their children to come, you know, hot meal, warm bath. Um, but along with that, we help these ladies rebuild their lives again. So that way they can, they can live independently on their own again, or maybe for the first time in their life ever. Um, so this is our mission, mission statement. We are a Christian-based restorative justice organization, assisting women in breaking the cycle of incarceration, drug addiction, and homelessness through making life changes, regardless of race, color, and, or creed. Um, so we are, we are Christian-based. Uh, we were originally founded in 1995. Um, one of our founding, um, founding mothers, I'll say, um, she was a Catholic nun. So and, and actually the group of ladies that used to go into the prison systems and do their ministry and work with the ladies, then it ended up transitioning into creating a home where these ladies could come to after they were released so that way they could help real, help build their lives again. Um, so we do have requirements while living at Perpetual Help Home. Um, they must go to work or school full time um, or do a combination of both, but whatever it is, it has to equal full time. So they wanna to go to school part time, work part time, or if you want two part time jobs, you can do that just as long as it equals full time. So with that being said, um, we don't generally take in women who are on any kind of disability 
uh, checks just because if you're on disability, if you're on full disability, you can't really work our, pro work our program. Um, that's not to say though each case is is different. Um, so if we have someone who's on 40 or 60 percent disability but willing to work the other other portion of it, then um, whatever they're legally allowed to do, then most certainly it's a it's a case by case basis. But we have had cases like that before uh, where we work with the ladies. Um, other than that, it's not on here. But we don't allow anyone with any violent crimes to come in or any crimes against children, just because we can house up to 17 ladies and X amount of kids. So it really just kind of becomes a safety point, a safety concern at that point. Um, some other guidelines. Uh, so once the ladies come in, they will they'll work on Opportunity Knocks, which is a three part program. Um, one of it is a job readiness course. Uh, second is well, during the job readiness, they'll put together um, put together their resume or update their resume if they have one, uh, learn how to write a cover letter, um, things of that nature, how to dress and, um, you know, how to how to get ready for for their next job that they will eventually be looking for. Um, the next one is a, a self empowerment. Uh, so a lot of these ladies come in and they're pretty much at the bottom at the rocks. Um, so it's kind of just another way to help get these ladies to, to start changing their mindset as soon as they come in. And then, of course, since we are faith-based, we do have a Bible study um, that goes along with that three-part program. So once they finish Opportunity Knocks, um, they go out, they look for a job, we help them find one. Um, and then once they get their paychecks, uh, they turn in 75% of us and they keep 25%. So 10% is a tithe to a church of their choice. 15% is rent. And then 50% is a savings that we keep for them. So a lot of the ladies, if they do have those probation or court costs, they can use that money to pay for it. Um, you know, some of them like to save to build to buy a car. Um, so it just kind of, they have medical costs or whatever they need that savings for. And if they don't need it, then it just sits there and it just builds up um, the longer and longer that they're here. Um, so, and then of course they get to keep the 25% for themselves, but really we provide everything for them that they could need here. Um, you know, we provide groceries, you know, sometimes they might want some extra snacks or um, stuff to take to work or anything like that. Or maybe if they have kids, they might might need a little bit of extra snack food. But for the most part, we provide their basic necessities while they're here. Um, so that's kind of a lot of them use that for their own kind of spending money if they want to um, do something. Um, they do have an assigned daily chore and each lady cooks one night of the week for their house. And if they don't know how to clean or if they don't know how to cook, because you know, sometimes we take for granted um, the basic things that we do or know how to do. I mean, a lot of times these ladies, they come in, um, you know, they've been on the streets for a really long time. So, you know, it's been years since they've had to clean their room or to, to clean a house. Um, maybe whoever their parents or guardians or whoever cared for them didn't teach them how to do those things growing up or at some point. So when they come in, it's, it's just kind of another way to teach them how to do that how to take care of your home and family. And then, you know, those are just general life skills that you need. So we do have a resident manager that lives on ground and she'll be the one to, to teach them if they need that extra help. But a lot of the times the residents will step up and help each other, especially when it comes to cooking, especially because everybody eats what's cooked. So nobody wants to eat anything that they might not necessarily like. Um, but they're really good about stepping up and helping the other ladies or teaching them how to do simple things, you know, like um, spaghetti or burgers or something like that to, um, to help them out. Um, so because we are Christian based, uh, they are required to go to one church service and attend either a Bible or prayer group once a week. Um, and then they also have, um, depending on their kind of their situation when they come in, um, sometimes we, we recommend them to take 
counseling services. Other times we kind of make it mandatory with their program. Um, but there's a lot of great resources in the area. If it's something related to mental health, Gulf Bend is great for that and getting medications. Um, Billy T. Katan has an awesome um, drug rehab counseling to go to. So there's there's different resources in the area. Midcoast has a great um, domestic violence program. So we try to get them connected to to the resources to, to help with their underlying issues and kind of what they've been, gone through, as well as we connect them to other resources as well. So um, VISD, our, our school district, um, they have Kids Connection, um, which is where they help the parents in the in the local school, school district and help them, they help tie them to more resources. So making sure that they're of also partnering with other organizations to make sure that they have more resources open to them. Um, they all have to do four volunteer activities per month. Um, we don't receive any kind of federal or state funds. All of our funding pretty much comes locally. Um, you know, we receive the United Way grant, but other than that, a lot of our funding is private donations, foundations, um, other grants that are local um, and community support. So we really feel like it's important to for us to pour back into our community. And you know, for some of these ladies, until they come here, they've never done any kind of volunteer before. So I think that's one of the things that they really enjoy most about the program is going out and and helping other organizations um, like Meals and Wills and Christ Kitchen are some. Um, are their favorite ones to go help out. And Meals on Wheels is just right around the corner for them. Um, but it's, if you're not familiar, Meals on Wheels helps serve um, meals to, to elderly. And then Crest Kitchen is like our local food kitchen here. But um, they love going to both of those locations and, and helping them out. Um, so they really do enjoy the volunteer activity. Sometimes it's kind of a drag getting them to go, but once they start doing it, you know, they love going and then they start going in groups and then they start pulling the new girl. So it almost kind of becomes a, a social and team building event whenever they go to these things. Um, so yes, and then I already hit on connecting them to community resources that affect to their specific needs. So that's the VISD connection um, or anything else of that nature that they might need. Um, so these are just some fun stats in 2021. Um, I won't read through them, but so far, um, we're getting ready to run the data for our, for this year. But so far this year, uh, we have helped 65 women, um, 67, including the two new ones that just came in this week. And that also includes 29 children this year so far. And currently, we have 12 children in house and 17 women. Um, and one of those ladies she is very pregnant, but um, so we do help a lot of a lot of ladies and children throughout the year. Um, so we have two projects in the background here at Perpetual Help Home. Um, I thought I put the other one first, but this one uh, we acquired a building, two buildings to start doing renovations to open up a daycare. Um, we are on the south south side, um, we are on the south side side of Victoria. So there are no licensed child care facilities in this area. So um, it's almost, it's essentially like a food desert, but in the daycare world. All of our ladies, not only our ladies, but the community in itself has to go to the other side of town just to have, just to have daycare so that way they can go to work and provide for their family. So this facility will not only be open to our ladies, which is only two blocks from us. So the ladies could walk there or carpool there and back um, to get their kid there. But it's also going to serve our, our our surrounding community as well. We're going to partner with Texas Workforce so that way we can get connected with CCMS. And because um, our ladies are on there, a lot of the community around us have CCMS as well. So just giving them another option, another another connection so that a way you know not only can we help our ladies and help them get to that next level but our community as well and not only that but it's another it's another source of revenue for us so that way when we apply for grants you know they see that we're trying to do things from our end to become a little bit more self-sufficient as well 
Um, and this right now, it's currently in the works. Um, we've been trying to work on the electrical since February. But let me tell you, them meter cans right now are hard to get a hold of. Um, so that's kind of really been our big hold up. And once we once we can update the electrical, um, then we can start doing renovations and all of that fun stuff. Let's see. Next, so this is our common ground building. Um, this previously has kind of just been used as somewhere. It's, it's kind of been used as our classroom and kind of Perpetual's own kind of community center. Um, but the renovations are done inside and it's just a matter of moving furniture around. But essentially what Common Grounds is gonna be, it's gonna be kind of like an all-in-one. It's gonna be somewhere where we can rent out office spaces, uh, whether it's for private offices, we will have a, um, uh, what is that word? A board meeting room, um, that's not the word I want, but, um, there's a space in there to, to rent out for like a board meeting room, something of that size, or you can rent out for, for private events, smaller events. Um, it's The building is actually a lot bigger on the inside than what it looks on the outside. Um, but not only that, but you know, hosting community resources. So bringing in the Texas workforce, workforce so where they could do resume writing or any kind of job skills or anything to upskill our ladies in the community around. Um, so it won't just be open up for us, it'll be open up for the South Side and general Victoria area. Um, not only that, but hosting like AA meetings, NA meetings, uh, prayer group meetings, stuff like that. So that way the community can come to as well. Um, but this one is probably close, well, this one is closer to opening up than the other one. It's just a matter of, you know, the committee is, we're kind of in the, in the process right now of, you know, making sure that our mission statement and all that stuff is exactly what we want it. So that way when the furniture is all set up and see all my filing cabinets in this wonderful picture, um, but getting all of that sorted. So that way when, when the furniture is set up and we are ready to go that we can hit the ground running with this. Um, but I'm really excited about this one. Um, I think this, this has the potential potential to really benefit the Southside area of Victoria uh, the most out of all of our projects. Um, other than that, I know that was a lot of information. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Lisa, it's Charlie. I guess one of my questions would be, what is the average uh, length of stay for, for your residents? So the average length of stay, if you give me one second. <clears throat> so usually the average length of stay is about three, three to four months. It's like a weird one of those like 3.6, but we'll just say three to four months is, is the average. And it varies too. So we don't say, okay, it's 90 days and that's all you get and then you have to be out. It's a lot of the things that we do here is very case by case. So um, like we have one lady right now, she works full-time as a CNA. She's going to school full-time to be a um, an RN. And she, so she's dealing with all of that. Um, and she's got a lot of medical cost. Um, so you know, we've told her, you know, you can stay here as long as you need to, as long as you're following the program rules, you know, you stay full time, um, whatever the case is, then we work with you. So it's it's really just kind of case by case. Sometimes women just need to come in and get that little extra savings so that way they can, they can put a down payment on a car or completely buy the car. And then once they get that, then, you know, they can go out and live on their own. Um, sometimes it's it's just as basic as needing transportation, and sometimes it's just whatever they have going on, they just need a little bit more time to become a little bit more financial stable. So it just really depends case by case on on, sure. on how long they they stay. Sure. And we have a question in the chat from Dr. Patel. What do you do when there is conflict between the residents? Oh, that's a fun one. <laughs> so <laughs> um, I actually... This is not my first resident live-in experience. So I used to coach at a university. And let me tell you, no matter where you go, when you have girls and women live together, oh, it's fun. 
but um so it really just kind of depends on the situation i always tell the ladies you know and it's one of those things it's easier said than done but if you feel yourself getting to that point just walk away you know that doesn't happen because it's not a perfect world um but essentially when it does come to that to that level where there is conflict then it's just sitting them down i like to talk to them one-on-one -on -one, hear each side see what's going on and then kind of figure out okay where is this miscommunication going on is there any kind of like underlying problems like maybe one of them took her stuff out of the out of the dryer when it was still wet and put her clothes in there so it's like you would be surprised at how petty these things are sometimes but it's they've never learned how to properly address something and not be rude about it or even if they don't mean to be rude it it comes out like that just because of how they speak so really i like getting to the underlying root of like what's really going on talking to them individually bringing them together and like look this is what it is this is how it happened and like we either need to agree to disagree or learn and move on but ultimately if someone just is not getting along and maybe we have one person who is just starting the drama with everybody it's one of those conversations that you have to have you know look we'd love to we love having you here we love helping you but we've got to figure out what's going on because you're bumping heads with everybody like do we need yeah. to get you into counseling or is it like a trauma response that you're having is it you're just being nasty just to be nasty and if it's that thing if you're just doing it to do it it either needs to stop or you're going to have to leave because like i said at any time where re i'm responsible for not only my staff but the 17 women x amount of kids and everybody needs to feel safe so it's really it's case by case but in the end if they can't get along then someone's got to go because to have chaos between two people so oh, yeah. quickly turns into a mess when you have everybody living in close quarters. Exactly. There's a follow up from her on a uh, shortage of certain items like diapers, formula, feminine hygiene. Uh, what do you do to help with the shortages? I guess there are other mm -hmm. programs like uh, Project Gabriel, right? So um, I know that there was a big shortage kind of going on with the baby products um we didn't really have any babies or kids toddler age down at that at that time so that's not something that we really um kind of experienced but we do we get stuff from from drives or people do showers for us all the time and typically just kind of like a range of stuff comes in with that so the baby stuff we kind of for the most part always have on hand um i know there's this one girl she's a high school student from hallettsville and she always does baby drives for us so and it's mostly pampers and diapers and that kind of usually lasts us throughout the year she brought one in in january so i just started in january she did one in in january and that stuff has been able to last us until just now we have maybe three or four kids um kind of infant to kindergarten age um i know kindergartens don't wear diapers but um just in kind of that age range that we have right now that those diapers have been able to last last that long to help them so we didn't really experience any problems during the shortage i've got two hands raised the first one is isaac and then we'll talk to melissa go ahead isaac uh, I may have missed, uh, Lisa, hi, my name is Isaac. Um, I may have missed where these resources are based out of, or? So we are based out of Victoria, Texas. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. All right, and uh, Melissa? Hi there, I'm Melissa Noah, and um, I just wanted to, I had a couple of questions. Uh, one is, uh, is this limited to uh, ladies in Victoria County? I know it's in Victoria. Is it? Do you have to be a county resident, or can you? Can they be from outside Victoria? So, uh, Melissa, we have had ladies as far as California. Um, oh, you don't, yeah, you okay. don't have to be a Victoria 
County resident, like I said, we don't receive any federal or state funding that mandates to do anything in particular um, okay. or to serve a particular community. Um, but sometimes, you know, these ladies are released from jail from all over the state. And you'd be surprised on calls and places, places that we get calls from. So if they can make it here, if they're within an hour's distance, we'll probably, you know, we'll figure out somehow how we can go get them or what we can do to help them. Or if they can get on a bus, we'll go pick them up from the bus stop. Um, I mean, and just a few weeks ago, Stella, if y'all don't know Stella, my program director, she's great. She picked up someone in the middle of the night at the bus stop. And I'm talking like one o'clock in the morning, middle of the night. So we will, wow. we will make it work. If they can get here, we will make it work. Okay. And, and is this uh, only for people that have been incarcerated and are just getting out? No, ma'am. So that's how we started, but we've evolved to accept women um, from all different, I guess, things that are going on. So currently okay. we have women who were homeless, running from uh, domestic violence situations. You know, they were addicted on drugs and pretty much lost everything. They were coming from the prison system. So I just tell people we accept women who are just down on their luck and just need a, that little extra help. Okay. Is there an application process or? Um... Yes. So okay. we do, we have an application. Um, it's front and back two pages. It's nothing strenuous. Um, we okay. ask everybody, don't lie to us because we're going to do the background check. Um, and so, and like I said, on the background check, the only thing that's going to keep them from coming in is any, any violent crimes or any crimes against children. Other than that, no matter what it is, we'll accept and we'll love on you. But um, after that, then they'll have an interview. If it's someone in town, we like to do those in person. If it's someone out of town, we can do video or we can do phone. Okay. Can and I chime in real quick? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what I wanted to say was our initial is to serve the Victoria and surrounding counties. Mm -hmm. If I don't, if I have a vacancy and nobody's trying to fill it and somebody from out of the, the our service area, then I can accept them as well. Okay. The okay. priority would be Victoria and the surrounding, uh, I think there's seven counties total. Okay, great. Okay. Yeah, I be better on that because Phil is my expert in that. Yeah, because I'm, I'm also thinking. Needs me. I, I was thinking of, of the, the clients that I uh, see. There's a, a part of my uh, clinical work that is within jails. And so I run anger management groups and different types of groups, mindfulness groups within the jails that sometimes they're around that area, or maybe they were, you know, kind of, they have family in specifically in Brenham and, and Robertson and Burleson County uh, areas mm -hmm. where I uh, work with jails. And so if there was a potential uh, to refer folks, I was curious to of, of if you were to work with people outside of that specific area. Yes. Short answer. So you want to take that one? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'll let you take that that's, that's your room. Is the application on your website or where can we I get don't that? believe we have it on our website, but um, okay. I we can email it to to the email list who got the, the Zoom invite. Great. That I wanted to I wanted to comment too. There's a there was a um, uh, post on your website about a former resident um, and I know her personally, and she went on to uh, become she was like a street person and addict and she went on to become a uh a recovery coach and then got her lcdc she oh moved yeah to, she's uh, not on there no more yeah she moved to corpus mm -hmm. and her and her husband are both doing lcd dc work in the fort bend area mm -hmm. and they're just doing fantastic that's great it's because she got us started yeah. at perpetual help home mm -hmm. wonderful i'm gonna pull it up for y'all but I just changed the story. I forgot. Um, but yeah, we do we do have stories online right now. So um, I mean, please feel free to go look at them. But um, if y'all have any other questions, um, my email is just Lisa, L-E-E-S-A at perpetualhelphome.org. Um, and then our office number is 361-575-5300. And if it's anything related to, um, you know, to getting people in, Stella is your lady to talk to. 
Uh, Dr. Patel's asking, do they have dental needs and who treats them? So that's actually a really great question. Um, so we have had the, we've been blessed by God in all reality. Uh, there is a local dentist in town that whenever the ladies come in and they do have dental needs, they will, they take in our ladies and they do a, like 99% of the work for free. Since I've been here in January, I don't think any of them have had to pay for anything. And that includes anything from regular cleanings to, um, to getting to getting fake teeth dentures uh so it's they've they've been i don't know i just don't know what to say other than they've just been god sent to us and natasha says can we get the name of that dentist uh i don't know if i can do that <laughs> okay not a problem i can ask him if he doesn't mind if we share it. What uh, what are the plans for the daycare? I mean, about uh, how many, you're gonna take in kids from the from the residences around there as well. Uh, how many how many kids are you gonna be able to serve? So it's, it's residents, uh, our resident kids in this, the community around us. And um, so that, it just kind of depends because right now we're, we're kind of deciding on what walls we're going to knock down and what we want to keep and when that is finalized then we can say okay um we have six classrooms or 10 classrooms now and what is the requirements and spatial needs and all that stuff so it really depends on once we finalize what what kind of renovations we're going to do right Elisa, did you say that the uh, the the ladies there they get counseling? Is is that through like a different program or yeah? Is so it, it's it's so it's kind of like a little bit of everything. If you if they need like drug addiction counseling, then they go to Billy T. Katan. If they need mental health counseling, they'll go to Gulf Bend um, Mid Coast Family Services. They have family and domestic violence. So it's different programs in Victoria that offer different things that, re that we resource them to. Okay, cool. You know, my, but that, one is, of my... that is one of our ultimate goals to get a, um, to get a counselor on staff. Well, one of my, uh, I guess, uh, specialties or, or levels of, of expertise is I'm uh, certified in approaching therapy through like a mindfulness based practice. And so mm -hmm. I love doing invitations. I've been, uh, I think the, I forgot the specific folks, but the the people that work with animals that eventually like they're doing research them and have to put them down, uh, their clinic mm -hmm. reached out. So every like uh, every semester we'll go and just have a discussion about how we use uh, mindfulness based approaches to be able to kind of deal with some of the difficult emotions that come up with loss and grief or burnout and stuff like that. So uh, if there's ever mm -hmm. opportunity uh, for uh, if you're having an event where you know mindfulness might be a, a cool topic, you know, please feel free to. I'll be your guy. Awesome, you know, thank you. I, Isaac also does up. telehealth in the hospitals. Uh, he can sit in an office in Bryan, Texas, and talk to someone in Quero. Uh, you know, and uh, you know, we live in a pretty miraculous age, and uh, Zoom is one of the, I think, one of the great things that came out of COVID. If the, if such yeah. a thing exists. Because uh, we can have our me meetings, we can do educational things and talks like this, and it also brings up the, the fact that we are a community, no matter how far away uh, we are, we all contribute to the same goals for the same same good, you know? Absolutely. Yep. So I'm just going to put in my contact contact information real quick um, in case if anybody needs it. That's not how you spell Because it is a mouthful. My name is different. There it is. Yeah. Anybody needs it. We've got a few more minutes if anybody has any other questions. <clears throat> Hi, Lisa. This is this is Tasha Johnson. I'm the one that asked about the dentist. Okay. <laughs> and the reason I was asking is, and, and Dr. Patella is um is also on this call. Um, 
when she's a dentist. We received um, uh, back in September a new HRSA grant on for psychostimulant grants, and there is a dental um, component to that. And that's why we were asking is because um, Dr. Patel will be helping us with um, with doing some education of uh, dentists in the area to help them um, identify people that need help with this um, mm -hmm. and so forth. And that's why we were asked. That's why I was asking you for the name because okay. we'd love to we'd love to be able to reach out to that person and just kind of talk to them about our grant and, and maybe how they could be, a, you know, help us with that. OK, yeah, if you send me a little bit more information about sure. the grant, I'll, we can talk to them and see if that's something they're interested in. OK. And what's the uh, opening grand opening date for the uh, common ground? Uh, we don't have that yet. <laughs> OK, <laughs> after the that. first of the year, I assume. Yes, yes, it'll it'll be 2020. What is it? 2023 now. Um, sometime in there. And we visited that uh, site when you first started, when you first got in there. And it's amazing how much has uh, come about with just uh, the short time. Yes, yes, it, it's, it's, I can't, I can't even begin to explain the difference of what it is now from when I first started. When I first started, they had already doing, started, you know, knocking walls down and doing renovations and it's just like wow it for me it's kind of like it really makes it come for full circle because I think it the renovation start ended um July August and so that's like almost three quarters of the year for me of being here and it's just kind of like there's no way that much time passed by yet so it's it, it's really cool to see the the progress that's come along um, and then, so right now we just have the first story um, completed. So if you noticed up here, these windows are blocked off, but that's because we have a second story up there, which once this keeps uh, starts going and it's generating revenue, then we want to fix the the second story as well and have more to offer. Uh, but that's kind of like a, a short long term goal. And that was an abandoned building um, that had been for sale, and they couldn't get it, get anybody to buy it on it. So they they gave it to you, all right? Um, well, it was donated to us by the Fasadi family. It used to be the old Victoria Plumbing uh, right. building, and then I don't know the specifics of how or why they decided to give it to us. I'm just grateful they did. Absolutely. <clears throat> Um, any other questions? Okay. Well, I appreciate y'all letting me talk today. Um, and like I said, if y'all need anything or have any other questions or um, want a copy of the um, the application, uh, just feel free to call us or shoot me an email. And Lisa, um, this is Simi Patel, how are you? Um, and I apologize, I didn't put my video on, I'm recovering from surgery. Um, Oh, you're fine. I, wanted, I wanted you to know that if you guys ever needed anything, please reach out to us. We'd be more than that's why we were, we were asking you questions is just to see what your needs are. And okay. we'd love for you to reach out to us. We could, you know, we, I mean, we're all over Texas, so we wouldn't mind, you know, helping you out because you're doing a good thing. So awesome. Well, thank you, Dr. Patel. And I appreciate that. We'll close on that note. And, and Dr. Patel will actually be our guest speaker in January. So come back. Uh, have a happy holiday, everybody, and, um, you know, onward and upward. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Lisa. We'll talk to you later. Thank you. Y'all have a good day. All right. Bye-bye.